Welcome back to the 2019 Pokemon Trading Card Game Regional Championship here in Greensboro, North Carolina. I am John Calchexis Kettler. To my right is Mr. Kirk Dubstex Dubay. And before we move on, we just want to let you know Round 9 is brought to you by Trollandtoad.com. Are you looking for some of the cards you've seen here today? If so, you should go to Trollandtoad.com. They have some of the best deals online. So remember, enter the code at checkout, Greensboro. Spell just like the city name to get 10% off your order. So, looks like we got a pretty interesting matchup here, don't we? We do have a pretty interesting match. One more thing I want to touch on Troll and Toad. Uh, great buy list, offering uh, a good amount of cash. Can't forget the buy list, try, yeah. Trying to thicken that wall a little bit before St. Paddy's Day tomorrow. More competitive than some eBay listings, that's for sure. That's true. So, uh, two great players, Jack Carter, Alex Shemansky, on the ones and twos, playing a 57-card mirror. Uh, one of the key notices, uh, notable differences, uh, Alex Shemansky playing Professor Juniper. That's right. Uh, Jack Carter playing Professor Sycamore. Major stylistic difference there, folks. Major, major. I mean, come on, Professor Sycamore's French. Absolutely. Um, we haven't gotten the cue that they've got their headphones on yet, so we'll keep the finer details uh, a little bit lower. But it is going to be uh, a Zoro Garb mirror. And both of these players are fighting for their day two lives. Draws, not going to make it happen today. No, they are at the point status where they need to have 19 points or better to be able to advance to day two. And in order to do that, you have to score a win right here. Now, this results in some awkward scenarios where if there were to be a tie, then they would both probably end up at or pretty close to the top 64 marker for points. But at the same time, you're playing to win and you're playing to get as far in the tournament as you can. So, but yeah, in, in short, ties don't help. Guys, don't help them here. That is a true winning in scenario between two accomplished players. Um, and uh, just kind of a, a matchup that st stood out on the pairing sheet when we were looking through, looking for those true uh, winning in matchups. And uh, made it easy on us. High, high caliber play going to be coming through. Yeah, and that's the thing is that we've seen a wide variety of decks this tournament. We've seen a wide variety of decks just today alone. But... At the end of the day, this matchup offers a lot of variety in terms of play. So we have some really skilled players with a lot of similar options, but a lot of different choices, a bunch of different paths we can take. So we just got the cue from our dear friend Jeff Saran that they have their headphones on. So let's take a look at some of the finer details other than Juniper and Sycamore. So uh, Jack playing one less versus Seeker and playing... Um was it? Yeah, so no Wobbuffet, no, no red then. card in Jack's list while we're looking at Shemansky's, and he does have both of those. They are included. So And Jack opting to go, uh, instead of red card, going Hypnotoxic Laser, which might be important to swing this two-hit uh, two hit KO exchange that they'll do that we're used to in these kind of Zorark GX matchups. Yeah, and we have a couple differences on Alex's list as well, obviously. We have... Special Charge and Teammates is part of the lists for Jack, but not in Alex's. So we got a couple options that are – It's I think the options that Jack has are probably going to be better in this mirror match. We are down to the action rip and start here for Jack Carter Pokemon Communication. And a not-too-hot start to have that lone eggs. No, for Alex, uh, certainly not uh, uh, what – he would have picked up for himself. However, no laser bank uh, available on Jack's side of the board to, to make that happen. Tapu Lele for Bridget. Um, maybe a Zorua, a Ditto Prism, and a Trubbish. Seems to be sometimes the order du jour, order of the du day. Jour. We'll see what uh, Jack elects to eye up here in the first turn of the game. Yeah, although I, I feel a little uncomfortable about dropping that double on the Zorua so early, especially because you have no idea of what is in Alex's hand, right? So he could just have garbage. He could draw and pass, and then you could win next turn, in which case, okay, that's fine. That doesn't matter whether or not you played the double. But if he has just about every piece that he needs to score some sort of response knockout, then you're down a double, and you're down a Zerua. And that's only because he attached the double. Jack getting that roadblock pseudo Udo is a clear indication that these gentlemen know exactly what each other are playing. Uh, or oh. at least Jack knows what Alex is playing. We got the one hypnotoxic laser in Jack's list, it looks like. Jack may be waiting to put it down. Doesn't seem like a lot of value on that lone egg. Uh, Zorua off the top for Alex. Jack well set up. Uh, not too concerned about giving up a knockout here to Alex. 
Doesn't look like it, and we just got what looks like to be the top deck for that Zerua, so Alex is off to the races as well. He is limited a single Pokemon thanks to Jack's Pseudowoodo Roadblock and makes such a big difference in this matchup to go first. Not only do you get the first evolution in the mirror, but you also get the first Roadblock. So you put your opponent in a much more awkward position trying to figure that out. You either have to get your basics and play without Lele or you need to just suck it up and try to figure something out. But you really still want to put your roadblock in play, whether or not you go first or second. Otherwise, you're just going to get blown away. Uh, Ultra Ball pitching a Zorark GX um, and a card I missed right quick. Going to put another Zorua down. It, it is to note that if Alex hits DCE Floatstone, can take a knockout on uh, Jax uh, Zor uh, Zorua in the active with uh, the Tapu Lele. Right, and with that, I think that Alice can apply the pressure that he really needs to to get ahead, even though he's already effectively losing two bench spaces, right? So the first one being that roadblock, and the second is having to start eggs active at the beginning of the game. Another eggs finding their way into Alex's hand. Uh, neither of these players getting a trubbish down uh, when they've had the option. Alex with the 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 could be Trubbish, Jack as well, because of Ditto, Prism, and how that reads. Uh, but worth noting that, not too worried. I'm just going to have one copy down, and we're going to go from here. Yeah, and he can work with that, and that can be okay for a while. Maybe one thing that Alex can approach later on in this series is just getting rid of that roadblock pseudo wudo. Jack uh, going to evolve to Zorark GX and has a Colrus of his own. Going to put it down, and uh, if that active for Alex doesn't change, there are going to be some riotously beaten eggs on Alex's side of the field. Yeah, but although Alex would be okay with that because it'll open up a bench spot, and it'll also get him the opportunity to propagate for the rest of the game. Can't disagree with that statement, but Jack would be drawing first blood, which is not... Uh, which is worth mentioning. Excuse yeah, me. and if Jack is able to get off a Garbotoxin early on in the game, that can be even more frustrating. Now, the trade-off, if he were to do that, is that he would lose Roadblock. And Roadblock, again, can't stress enough how important it is in the mirror match, but he is eyeing it. Let's see. We've got Skyfield coming down for Jack. Going to have all the bench space to work with. Uh, has five pokes down now. Uh, has the opportunity to put three more down, if he'd like. Yeah, and one thing we didn't get a chance to see in Toronto that we will get a chance to see here is how this mirror interacts where you get the pseudo wudo down, you get Skyfield in play, but you no longer have fear of, say, Delinquent coming into play. So you aren't going to lose cards due to that Delinquent because, well, no longer with us, but uh, he's got clear advantages here with that Skyfield with the roadblock. So he's going to be able to load up more stuff to set up. So even if something were to happen to that Skyfield, like I'll say a field blower, then it's not going to be that big of a deal. Jack ultra balling, uh, getting that Trubbish on the bench. Still has trades, I believe. Yep, oh, just, just announcing knockout. Mm -hmm. Scores a knockout, draws first blood, and is perfectly fine with that. Alex promoting Zorua. Um, Zorark and a DCE will allow Alex to put. Uh, maybe not get the first knockout, but allow to, but be allowed to put the first bit of pressure on. Uh, Garbotox and Garbodor coming down. Oh, now one thing I want to note here that could make a big difference is there is a difference between the there is a difference between these two lists. We have two different non GX Zoroarchs. So Alex Shemansky, his non GX Zoroark is stand in Mind Jack which can score an instant knockout if it gets into play. And Jack, meanwhile, his is the foul play Zorark. So with the foul play Zorark, it doesn't have quite as much of an opportunity to explode in this situation the way that a mind jack for what looks to be like pretty close to knockout damage would. So, Alex uh, using a dowsing machine and an egg to get Colrus back. Um, we see the Wonderlock Klefki on the bench as well, and a Garbotox and Garbodor. Um, so Alex could have the opportunity to lock out Jack of his abilities for a turn um, and put the first hit in on the Zorark GX on Jack's side of the board. Exactly, and so even though he had a little bit of a slower start, 
he's not punished too much by that, especially since he's got that free spot. DCE rolling off the top after the prop egg trade with the uh, Zorark GX in the active. Has to be happy about seeing that one. Gonna ask Jack how many cards he has, and Alex Shemansky does play the one copy of red card. And we have the second Zorark GX coming down with a reasonably complete setup. Let's see. If it, it looks like trade. Yeah, and it looks like Alex might have to resort to some two shots, but in exchange for that, he can severely disrupt Jack's board. Prop egg, prop egg. Going to be yeah. using those to leverage, I, like I believe, an ultra ball here. Those going down. Alex back in the deck. Um, as you mentioned before, Klefki going to be able to, if when he do elects to use the Wonder Lock ability and probably put it on that Garbotoxin, uh, Garbodor, will open up yet another bench spot, which could be pivotal here for Alex to maybe get another Trubbish down. Something along those lines. Another Zorua. Sounds good. His own roadblock. I would be fine with another Zorua, uh, although there is a benefit to putting down another Trubbish. A big one is that you can pivot to Trash Alanche later. Another thing is you can just replace that Garbotoxin if something were to happen to it, like, I don't know, maybe getting Guzma and KO'd. Alex counting the cards, uh, propping the eggs back. What is this man working on? And there Wonder goes our lock. Wonder Lock. All right. Abilities turned off. Yep, abilities so turned off, so he's going to exploit the ever living heck out and he's of that. And going to steal himself a, a knockout. knockout. I love it, man. We're, we're thinking here, okay, you know what? Maybe we can do a little bit of damage. He's like, no, no, guys, you're wrong. I'm just going to go ahead and, and explode and knock this guy out. And this is exactly yeah. what we're talking about. These are kind of, they, they can go the traditional route of just hit into each other back and forth, becomes an Acerola thing. However,. <laughs> Alex Shemansky kind of unlocking everything to his advantage, going to be able to take a big knockout, catch right back up, and take the prize lead. But you can't lock up anything because you can't unlock anything because it's Wonder Lock, even though it's a key. Wonder Lock unlocking Alex Shemansky's guy. Side there we of the board. go. There locking, we go. Locking Jack Carter side of the side of the board out. Okay, I'm digging it. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll work that we'll work that in. There's probably a better pun somewhere somewhere in there that we missed. Oh, I'm fine with that. That's but here we are. I'm fine. I'm fine with key puns. Uh, Jack Carter going to promote Zorark GX makes sense, um, and his hand is on supporters alone. Ditto Prism not going to be able to evolve this turn. Yep, and the one time where Ditto Prism doesn't get a chance to make a difference, but with that field blower, it says, you know what, guys, I want to grow up to be something else. I want to be Zorark or Garbodor going to be gar going to be Zorark and so we've got multiples in play here so lots of pressure being applied right back Zorark GX uh, coming down on that Ditto Prism going to give him another uh, trade ability per turn versus Seeker for Colrus Colrus for Oodles 9 if I'm counting correctly Yep, you are counting correctly. We've got 9 and looks like no used trades so far so could be ballooning into a 15 card hand pretty soon. Jack gonna rip nine off this one. Gonna try and find a DCE, put some pressure back onto Alex's side of the board. Interestingly enough, neither of these players, uh, from my quick glance at the list, playing any special energy hate. So nope. those DCEs are coming down and they are sticking around. And I feel like that's been a pretty consistent thing we've seen all tournament out of the Zorark list that have popped up is there is very little special energy hate, which is surprising because that's been almost a theme for Expanded the past couple years. So it, it really just appears like the hate is limited to Trev. Like Trev and Mill decks like Wailord, and that's about it. Jack trading away the Hypnotoxic Laser. I might have liked to see that be played and maybe uh, swing the matchup back in his favor with Sleep. Uh, however, Jack says that's not uh, what I'm doing this afternoon, this evening. Uh, another trade for the trading away the Trash Lance Garbodor. Uh, DCE onto the Zorark. And he's just going to be like, I want to get into a 2HKO two, two slugfest right now. Alex is probably still like, you know what? I'm not about that. Let's just go ahead and keep on doing what we've been doing. This is my way to counter Roadblock. I'm just going to shut off abilities and get as many Pokemon into play as possible. 
Jack. Ultra Balling away. Definitely a Psychic Energy, and I think that's another Zorg GX. Looks like it. Um, interesting choice there. The lists only play two. However, they both run a copy of Super Rod, which does allow them to chuck those back in the deck um, for, for later use, potentially. Um, but dumping energy is seeming like a good resource. Uh, but Jack says, nope, not today. I'm attaching DCE, and I'm going to go on the Zorark plan for a bit. Yeah, and again, because of that one special charge that Jack runs, he can afford to be a little more aggressive with his resources. So he can rely on just a bunch of riotous feedings over and over again and still be able to sustain, say, like a single energy discard at some point. Jack taking a quick look in the discard. I believe he's working on resolving an Ultra Ball, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and friendly reminder, we don't have abilities shut off right now, so he's got a wide variety of options. And, of course, at Skyfield's in play, he's not opposed by a pseudo Wudo right now. The Oracorio, I'm... Intrigued to see if that can find some way to be relevant, but to be real with you guys, it generally does not in the Zorak mirror. So maybe just, uh, just pulling it out of the deck to thin it out. Right, uh, just like, a, a little bit of thin. Yep, exactly. Saw the dazzling machine in hand, prop egg, and that Oracorio is going gone. away, and we're getting a trainer card back. You can see how yeah. important it is to thin out your deck as much as humanly possible when an N is always looming. And as we've seen before through Noah Bujack in Toronto um, and earlier today, these Zorark GX decks really like to versus Seeker N to try and catch themselves up back in the game. Yep, and getting ahead, just playing that board down as much as possible. Already, again, backup prizes after being tied. So Alex is now in the position where he needs to be able to keep up momentum need to do he needs to do the exact same thing that jack did and here's that breakthrough zork we were talking about earlier this is its ch his chance alex's chance to punish jack for his overextension possible overextension with all this bench pokemon pokemon communication i believe that was puts a prop egg back into the back into the deck that's right and so because the pokemon's going back Alex can get a new one, and he, he's eyeing the pseudo Wudo a little bit. But if he did get the pseudo Wudo, then he would limit Jack's bench to the point where he would be outside of range of a knockout. So he's eyeing something else. Yep, and there's his own Oracorio. Possibly is even more deck thin. We mentioned it's critical, uh, again, to protect from uh, N, where you shuffle in and you draw cards equal to the number of prizes you have remaining. Uh, that Mind Jack going to do 30 damage, 10 plus 30 damage for each Pokemon on Jack's bench. So we're swinging for 250, my friend. That's a bunch. <laughs> that is quite a bit of damage. And Jack's quite a bunch. And Alex doing it with a single prizer is not uh, nothing lost on us either. It is very important. Yeah, and it seems like Alex has all the answers right now. Getting that lockdown, getting the prize game on an odd exchange so either forcing Jack to have game in hand or be forced to knock out a less favorable Pokemon. And Shemansky with Colrus going to be drawing 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 12 cards off this Colrus. Really showing off how powerful that supporter can be in this Zorark GX deck. Yeah, and without knowing the exact contents of Alex's hand Playing that Colrus was a good idea in this position because regardless of the contents of Jack's hand, you're actually improving your own odds to be able to play an N to counter him. So with 12 cards in his hand, I mean, there's that VS Seeker hanging out saying, hey guys, make me an N. He's able to effectively either force Jack to play an N of his own, to have game in hand, and it doesn't matter one way or the other, or for him to just go ahead and use VS Seeker N the next turn. Jack taking a look at Alex's discard. Alex putting a floatstone down on Trubbish. We saw the floatstone uh, before go down on that Garbodor, locking out abilities. And uh, Alex just making sure all that he wants is on the bench so that it can be discarded and removed from the deck. And I like that Alex can finally put that pseudo Wudo down and apply the exact same pressure as earlier. And 
for what it's worth, because of the garbotoxin, his own pseudo wudo is shut off. Both pseudo wudos are shut off, so he gets his cake and he eats it too. He gets all that damage from mind jack, yet he can enjoy the roadblock next turn, or rather whenever he wants to, because that again that float stone is shutting it off with garbotoxin. But if it were to go away, then Jack would lose a lot of Pokemon. Choice band DCE coming down. Jack has to take in consideration that if he were to knock off that float stone, it would impair his side of the board as well, as you mentioned, because of both roadblocks would come into, into effect. However, Jack's field blower is gone, his dowsing machine is gone, and Jack playing down Professor Slickamore. Going to draw That's seven right. more cards. Yep, he's just going to get some more stuff, get a knockout, and try to be able to adjust from there. But if I'm Jack with Alex sitting on so many good cards in his hand, I would basically be assuming that I'm going to lose next turn. Jack does have some cards he can thin out. Um, as you mentioned, very important, um, to, very important to get those out because Alex may be looking to end here. And if you're just taking a one prize and going down to one prize with abilities locked off, you're stuck with whatever card rolls off the top and whatever you draw for your turn. Yeah, and in that position, you're just living on a prayer. And with this Battle Compressor, again, that's more deck thin. We're at a point in the game where Skyfield probably isn't going to be going anywhere, so he can maybe afford to discard a Skyfield of his own with it, but doesn't really change too much of the fact that Alex has a significant portion of his deck in his hand. And so now he just has to make the little plays here that essentially keep this from being a near 0% chance of victory to giving himself a little bit of a wiggle room in case there was something missing. Absolutely. A couple of cards in there. Uh, Skyfield being one of them, as both players are playing Skyfield today. Uh, easy promote for Alex. He has the floatstone down. Going to ask to look at the discard. Counting the Pokemon, oh. can Alex cheese two prizes it, off the uh, egg and the Klefki or egg and Or Zorua? could he just could he just cheese it with the Oracorio? I mean, with, it looks like he doesn't have that many poke. Oh, and it looks like we might get an Oracorio cheese. Oh, yeah, he's getting an Oracorio cheese right there. And that is Yep, that's the first game right hit. there, my friend. Yep, no deck thin right there. That was just Oracorio saying, you know what? I want to go ahead and show up. I want to go ahead and be the boss this time. I'm not just going to be chucked into the discard pile. Let me do something for once. And so, proving me wrong earlier when I was saying, okay, Oracorio doesn't get too much of a chance to shine in the mirror, Alex is like, you know what? Let's just go ahead and end the game that way. It's uh, it's a very easy card to lose track of. Easily. Throughout, throughout the t you know, if it's not in your face staring at you, not just looking down the barrel of a supernatural dance, um, it can come out, the splatted the egg right out of there. To, took another knockout, I, uh, irrelevant to the Klefki or the Zoru, I believe. Was able to cross the finish line, now those last prizes, pass it over to Jack. And now the onus is on Jack to, to win himself a game. Yeah, it, although I feel like Jack's positioned decently well enough so that he can at least squeak out a game too. There is a little, a little bit of a lack of time right now for my liking. So I felt like if I were to lose that game, if I were from Jack's side of the board I would be nervous because with about 30 minutes left total and once they shuffle up it'll be maybe about like 29 and a half he has to end this second game relatively quickly yep and but it helps so that it seems like both players really do care about the chance to be able to advance to day two and win this thing so they are really trying hard not to run the risk of knocking each other out Jack either way regardless the pressure is definitely on him to be able to finish the game and finish it quick fortunately this deck is explosive so if jack again you know s s takes away a little bit of those percentage chances of uh the perfect play and is just always making good plays with the with the ability to uh, conserve some time i think that might be a route he can use to get through this second game and uh find a little bit more time on the clock for that yeah, third i agree players are shuffled up they both got starters yeah, and it looks like we're about to get off into this game two of round nine of the tournament. Winner takes it. Winner goes on to game two. Lots of pressure on both sides. Yep, Alex Winner looking to lock his spot into day two. Jack trying to make this a make this a, a cause for him to to win game two and maybe a quick game three. 
Uh, Jack again going to be on the button. Natural Tapu Lele going to find that Bridget, I'm sure. And interesting to see if Jack elects to go uh, same route as last time. Zorua, Ditto, Pseudo Udo with that roadblock ability. I feel like that was okay. It's just he needed a bit of a better opening against that Mind Jack Zorark. And that's the problem is that Mind Jack Zorark is very good in this mirror, especially if you don't have it yourself. When actually, you know, it, yeah, it looks like, again, going back to the type of Zorark that both sides are running with that foul play Zorark, Jack isn't going to be doing as much damage. So he won't punish Alex in case he overextends. Zorua, Ditto Prism, Trubbish, uh, which is the more uh, common Bridget search we've seen from uh, these these Zorark Garbodor decks. Oh yeah, it's perfectly balanced, and in case anything gets knocked out, then you still have multiples of whatever you want. Ultra Bar for Alex Schmancy pitching, I believe, a Guzma and a Propagation Egg. Um, and Alex Schmancy looking to eye up a similar play. Tapu Lele for Wonder Tag, using the Wonder Tag ability, grabbing a Brigetti Spaghetti, and Delicious. three cards there. Trubbish, Zorua Zorua for Alex Shemansky, which me leads me to believe that Ditto P Prism's probably prized. Maybe so, yeah. And it looks like neither player is really opting to go for that hyper-aggressive roadblock right now. Instead, opting to set up, which makes perfectly good sense so that they can, well, draw more cards with trade, offer more disruption opportunities with Garbodor, and just go ahead and deal with Roadblock when they really, really need it in play. Oh, and you know what? The red card hitting Alex's hand the first turn of the game. I love seeing that. It puts instant pressure on Jack to not have something just absolutely terrible off these four cards, which admittedly is a low chance, but you know it happens, and we've seen it happen plenty of times before where a red card ended somebody's tournament. Playing a lot of uh, awkward one ofs. Uh, sometimes the just rolling four four dead ones off the top can really uh, can really get you down. Um, Jack, I believe, took four and then maybe drew for the turn. Yeah, Looks I believe like that's it, yeah. what he said. Alex said okay. I'm gonna pass, so Jack said I'll just draw five. Easy enough. Um, Zorark GX, great card to see off the top, but a lot of resources that I'm not convinced Jack wants to lose. Um, Pokemon Communication being a weird one. Does want to dump that energy and the Field Blower, or is that a Floatstone? Yeah, and he ultimately opts for the energy. I feel like that's cor the correct play here, even though it limits his options to be able to trash a Lanch later. It is effectively the hardest card to utilize in the moment right now, and maybe even utilize for the next few turns. Tapu Lele. Colrus. Big ol' chorus. That is a big chorus. That's a big one, and that's going to be a chorus for 10. That's pretty worthy of a high five right there, if I do say so myself. Uh, players at the table not going to oblige you, Mr. Nope. Kettler. Unfortunately. Jack's yeah. going to shuffle in, and he's going to Too draw serious. himself. Too serious. It, it is winning in, cards. after all. It is winning in. Jack uh, getting the DCE down, getting the Garbodor down. Um, Jack has a lot of uh, lot of chances to hit a tool and uh, get Alex locked out of this game, at least for the first portion of it. Yeah, and if I'm Jack, I'm feeling a bit better than I was the last game because, okay, this is going to be a knockout on something relevant. It's not going to be a knockout on eggs. It's just going to come back. But also, I don't have to work that hard to get these knockouts. I don't have to explode and have 210 damage and then just get mind jacked in the face. I can go ahead and draw some prizes. I can go ahead and advance my game state without overextending. Jack asking how many cards Alex had left. Very important play is putting down the first Skyfield because both players play Skyfield um, and only one field blower each. Getting the first Skyfield in play means that Alex has the opportunity to draw more dead cards. That's right. And so... We've got that Klefki Wonder Lock going onto the Garbodor. Perfect balance because you can control when you use your abilities and when you don't because gets discarded at the end of your opponent's turn. Zork GX, Zork GX. Choice Band coming down on one of the Zork And GX. the field, field blower. blower, nice. And that's the only thing he's discarding. He wants to have that Skyfield in play so that he can have a response knockout. He's not going to discard it. Juniper for seven. Going to give Alex a great look and a good opportunity with that Trebuch with the Floatstone and the active to step up and take the first big knockout again. Missing maybe just the DCE, has the choice band. 
now just needs to find the rest of the Pokemon to to sculpt this uh, this game plan to fruition. Right, and so he's got basically all of the Pokemon that he would need. There are still additional pieces, though. I mean, of course, there's that all important double colorless energy, and I don't think I can tell. Is that uh, is there a choice band already attached to that? Zor no. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's a choice that band. Yep. Secret rear. So he just needs that double, and he's in business. Uh, Pokemon Communication going to send, I believe it was Mr. Mime, Bench Barrier, back into the deck. Grab a Shaman. Alex is digging for this. Um, and Alex's four cards couldn't have been better for what Jack set up. And we see some uh, body language trying to figure out what, if anything's going on here. Okay, seems like it's okay. Just a I think Jack's just asking some questions. Maybe just having good table banter. DCE right there. Uh, Alex going to get yeah, whatever man. he wants. That's right. He's just going to be able to get that knockout right now. He has the perfect math coming. We've got seven Pokemon on the bench with an eighth Pokemon. That's going to be the perfect 210 that we've seen so many times before in this series. Prop egg for a trade. Prop egg for a trade. Prop egg for a bench spot. Yes, sir. We Once we get that battle compressor for a little additional thin. That's a running theme you've probably seen throughout the day. We have deck thin going on, discarding cards. You don't need as much. Or, well, cards you may technically need like Skyfield, but you aren't that worried about losing. So yeah, Skyfield, uh, as I mentioned, Jack playing the first one down meant a lot of cards were dead and Al on Alex's side of the board. Uh, obviously, because you can't bump a stadium with the same stadium, a stadium of the same name. That's right. That's just an overarching rule of the game where you can play a stadium once a turn, you can play a stadium to discard another stadium, but you can't play the same thing because it, I mean, just go ahead and think about it logically. You can't move from the same place to the same place. You can't Eiffel Tower the Eiffel Tower. That's right. Even though, I guess, theoretically, you could have multiple sky fields in the universe, but hey. We're going down uh, the wrong hole, the rabbit hole, if you will. Rescue Stretcher going to pull Zoru out of the discard. Much better than having an egg soak up that spot. Going to keep the egg in the discard there. <laughs> Evolving into his own uh, Garbotoxin Garbodor. Alex Shemansky is just on fire. I, I completely agree. And he has the perfect setup where no matter what happens, I can't foresee... Any combination of cards that Jack could pull off that would just completely devastate Alex's board in a turn, right? So let's go ahead and say that he loses the float stone on the garb. Let's say that we get a roadblock and a knockout. He's somehow able to pull all of that off. He still has the Zerua threatening Jack, so that could become a breakthrough Zoroark and just mind Jack for a whole bunch of damage. And there's something to be said about having all those Zorar GXs in play. Oh, and it looks like we're finally going to see the foul play. Jack, seeing, uh, seeing the success that Alex had in game one uh, with the, we'll call it baby Zorark, um, maybe thinking that this is his way uh, back into the game while he's under this ability lock. Zorark GX, uh, not as strong in that particular case. Colrus for 3-6 plus 8 like, on yeah, the side, like 14. 14. Yep, that's going to be 14 cards for Corus. Overwhelmingly good odds to get all of the bench Pokemon that he needs to have that foul play return knockout on the active Pokemon's right is beating. And so this is our opportunity for Jack to work on a little bit of a comeback because that's going to be two prizes for one non-GX Pokemon if it were to be the target of a knockout. Also keep in mind, if Jack hits his own copy of Field Blower, uh, might be able to unlock, as you mentioned, you know, get a uh, watch and learn pseudo Udo down. And I do believe I saw that field blower as he was shuffling through. So Zorark GX, this is an opportunity for Jack to really unlock this hand, take a big knockout, and uh, put put the onus back on Alex to to come up with a response. Oh, and we see both of the eggs coming down onto the bench. That's a little bit of vulnerability at some point to the Oracorio, perhaps, but. For now, Jack's like, you know what? It's not that big of a deal. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm not going to get a bunch of prizes lost just because of the one Oracorio right now. Jack taking a quick look at what's in the discard. 
Um, probably doing a quick little Pokemon check, making sure he just didn't set himself to get blown out by uh, Oracoro Supernatural Dance. Zorark, as you mentioned, with Mind Jack, going to be able to take a knockout here uh, if Alex can find a Guzman and Energy to pair it up with. Yeah, and that's the liability of having a Floatstone on your Garbodor and shutting yourself off with your own Garbotoxin is you got to have the resources to carry through. And if you don't, then eventually you're going to get shut off by your own ability, the anti-ability, if you will. Oh, and I, and you know what? Maybe we have this happening all over again. Maybe I'm like, you know what? That There's no way the Oracoria is going to come into play. And then Alex is like, oh, hold my soft drink. <laughs> exactly. Super Rod, going to recycle in uh, and then play in N? Nope. Colrus. Mo Colrus, most likely. Nope. N. All right. Yep. Jack with a bunch of cards in hand. Alex is like, I ah, that that doesn't that doesn't uh, feel too good to me. Let's, let's reduce <laughs> that hand size a little bit, uh, especially while I've got items locked down. It is to note, Jack elected to not field blower off that float stone, so Jack gonna going to be going another turn without abilities. And let's see. Yeah, his deck is pretty thin right now, though. So decent shot that he could just get the field blower back, although it's a little less likely with the sheer number total overall even though he has played a lot and he has discarded a lot so we get a cheap knockout from Alex just to maintain momentum that Oricorio if left unchecked is only going to be able to snowball the amount of damage it does uh, egg splat but not the attack going to the discard Jack got to find a way to take three prizes here and a little bit on the back foot and the crazy thing is Zorark really would only need about like four or five cards to be able to do that it could be, it could have Egg, egg Splat. That's the rogue deck you're looking for. It could, could very well be. Jack playing Rescue Stretcher. Looks like refreshing a Zorark GX line and uh, Klefki. Yep, trying to recommit to the Klefki strategy earlier, having that ability lock going into Alex's turn, but not into his own. Just a quick shuffle up for Jack. Um making sure the, the stretcher Pokemon are, are well dispersed within the deck. DCE still on the active. Pseudo Udo with the roadblock and a field blower away from kind of messing with uh, Alex's board in a, in a very significant way. That's right. So the moment that, oh, man. And so <laughs> this is actually really funny because it doesn't have anything additional to copy the foul play Zorark is just hitting for 60 and it's only hitting for 60 because there's a stadium in place. So we're getting additional non GX, non EX pressure from Alex to counter Jack's own non EX, non GX pressure. Seeming at least for this matchup that mind Jack Zorark was, uh, was the baby Zorark of choice. Um, and maybe the one that's a little bit better for this type of matchup. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree. Although both have their benefits, especially in other matchups with the mirrors strictly speaking having mind jack there is just too good jack probably able to leverage that foul play against decks like waylord and things like that oh um, poor waylord can't handle those types of foul plays but i do want to see if, how he's going to turn this into it i mean he's he seems like he's angling for that trash alanche like it seems like there's there should be almost no doubt that that's what he's trying to set up here but I would like to, I'd like to see that going in a little bit. That way, Alex will have a bit more time saved in case, worst case scenario, he did lose this game and then had to go to a game three. <coughs> Ultra ball for Alex Shemansky. Going back in the deck, taking a look. Mm, taking a look. And getting that, getting that eggs back. Especially advantageous once, w when and if that float stone goes away on the Garbotoxin Garbodor. From Dragon's Exalted. That egg, uh, as you mentioned, is in hand. Oh, now I'm, I'm just waiting to see how he's going to 
or what what else he's looking to do where he, oh, okay it looks like is he discarding the garbodor was that something else it looks like a trash ledge garbodor to me yeah Alex gonna hard way that egg that he just searched up into the discard through Juniper. Yep, and we just garbage collected a versus seeker on top. Huh? Trash collection. That's surprising. I I want to <coughs> see. I want to see what our maniacal genius friend to the left has planned here with the garbage collection. It's a great utility attack. Great thing to bring up as just a surprise to get all important resources back. Although, because of that garbage collection, he is now a little bit slower. And uh, this is Jack's opportunity to, to seize control of the game and get us onto a game three in what's been a really great series so far. Colrus going to draw Jack a whole mess of cards. Eight plus eight, 16. The, yeah. full, the full Monty. The full Colrus. Oh, amount. gosh. Is, uh, you think that might be his whole deck? He's doing the count. All right. No, not quite his full deck, but pretty close. So, yeah. Just double checking, making sure <laughs> you draw too much, too little. Uh, when you're drawing up to 16. Oh, yeah, you know, actually, yeah, pr pretty close. One card closer than I thought. If he doesn't hit his uh, field blower if he needs it this turn, uh, that's just rough luck. Can't insulate himself a little bit from Oracorio. Um by using Super Rod, that was in his hand as well. Yeah, and we're back to square one where if he leaves that foul play up, then it's not really advancing the board state a whole lot. But at the same time, he doesn't have that much that he can go with where once he does that, the only attacker that he does have left is the foul play Zorark. Hard retreat by oh. Jack. This is such an <laughs> awkward board position, man. Like, oh, Interesting. Tapu Lele comes up. So we've got another really conservative play right now. He's wanting to knock out that Trubbish, and I think that because that the garbage collection Trubbish has lower than average HP, I think it's 60, so that should be a knockout, meaning that Jack can get that pressure back on, but not with either of his Zoroarks, which are capable of winning the game next turn. So with this promotion here and no other Trubbish to be evolved into Trash Lanch Garbodor in sight, um, is there no concern for Jack that this Tapu Lele is going to go down? You know, I, I think he might not be too worried about that because, I mean, it's there. It's about to get knocked out. Like, there are multiple ways that Alex can knock it out, but by putting that little bit of pressure, it's going to get him that much closer to crossing the finish line, if you will. And so he's got two Pokemon that could come up instantly win the game if the right card combination comes up. And so the great thing is, even if Alex were to bring up Mind Jack, then Jack could copy Mind Jack with Foul Play. If Alex brings up Zorg GX to score a knockout, then he could do the same thing. He could try to foul play or use a hard Zorark GX Riotus beating itself. Ultra Ball going to throw away Zorark GX and another Ultra Ball. Jack pulls a Trubbish of his own. No bench space for that one just yet. No, something has to get knocked out first. I mean, you can have eight bench spots, but you can't have nine. At least in uh, regular Pokemon. That is how Skyfield reads. Jack with a whole mess of cards in hand. Is this a trade to on the laser, or is this going to be a play of the laser? Yeah, uh, that would be bad if it were a trade on the laser, because, uh, oh, he's going for the Hypnotoxic. Or, wait a second. Yeah, he's going for the Hypnotoxic. Oh, and he's putting it to sleep. I think it's more for that 10 to tick in between turns. Um, oh, the garbage man. collection, uh, Trubbish. 70 HP. Okay, yeah, and he's, he, he just does that 10 tick and just knocks it out either way. And going into Alex's turn, he has a lot of pressure to figure something out here. 
I don't think that Jack has enough Pokemon in his discard pile to see that Oracorio play like the last game. Although it would be amusing, and if you're Alex, kind of disappointing if you lost the game because your opponent Oracorio'd you, just like how you won the last game. Right, exactly. Um, and I looked it up again. <laughs> that Trubbish does have 60 HP. Jack had the knockout. Just getting cards out of his hand. Yeah. Has to be what that represents there. Yeah, and I'm fine with that for sure, especially because every card matters. And if you're out is, and looks like we've got another big Colrus this time from Alex. So we aren't going to see that super small end down to nothing. Jack, I believe those dice represent that he has 11 cards in hand. And Alex going for a Colrus, which means whatever Jack has in his hand is safe for now. And Jack has to be excited about that. That's correct, although if I'm either of these players, I'm not at all excited about the amount of time that's left in the game because with 43 minutes left, it is coming down to the wire. And especially if I'm Alex and I'm up a game, I am just feeling very nervous because if I somehow let this game slide then there's no way that we can figure something out. So it really, unless they have some sort of agreement based off the number of prizes going into ga after game three resolves, then they would be stuck with a draw. Alex taking uh, count of the amount of uh, Pokemon in his discard, looking down at the opposing uh, Oricorio, as you mentioned, finished up last game. Be a shame if he got finished up by, uh, by Oricorio himself. DCE going to go on the Mind Jack Zorua, I believe, uh, breakthrough, correct? BKT That's correct, yep. With the stand-in ability. Yep, and with that breakthrough, Zorark, he's going to be able to get a knockout here without giving up an EX or GX Pokemon. But we're still in the same position as earlier where all that Jack needs is just a GX or EX knockout. That's all that he needs, and if he gets it, he wins. And Alex, if... Jack whiffs it, then he wins. Oh, man, there it goes. A very, very big mind jack, just like the past couple. Big mind jack, and is, uh... Did Jack get, um... Did he get red carded? Oh, gosh, you know, I think that he did. Yeah, yeah, he got red carded. <laughs> So he's drawing a new hand of four, and Alex is hoping that it is not the card that will win Jack the game. And we're seeing a little bit of delay, no immediate action here. It looks like that's just a sky field, a couple cards that don't look like they're going to add a lot. And... Uh, field blower. That's yeah, gonna, uh, field blower is going to add a lot. Field yeah, you're right. Field yeah, blower field, field blower is going to add a bunch for sure so he just needs to be able to score a knockout field blowers on a gx, GX. or ex <laughs> go, go, was gonna, <laughs> was gonna attach uh, the field blower there for a moment oh and then pseudo wudo is gonna come into play guys guys pseudo wudo there, if there's no uh if there's if there's uh no garbo toxin anymore then pseudo wudo is coming to play so yep pseudo wudo gonna require alex to trim his bench down a little bit uh, Jack unlocking his prop eggs, and he needs to find a Guzma DCE choice band. That's right. So then we've got the disc cards coming down. It seems like they caught it without any problem. Guzma DCE choice band. Um, that Tapu Lele does have a float stone. I believe that's what that rainbow rare is. So wait there. Yeah, and it seems like Alex is stuck on the last card to discard here. I think you have to get rid of the Tapu Lele to give one more, to have Jack need one more thing to take this knockout. Yeah, I agree. Jack racing, taking a yeah. look at the deck. Trash Oh, Garbador. man. And you know what? I think that... Let's see what Pokemon he has. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't. It can't factor in this turn. It might not even... Actually, you know what? It looks like it's just a deck thin option because there's no way that he could evolve something up into that Trash Lanch garb. So just getting stuff out. 
Oh, and we've got a Sycamore for seven cards. I wonder what he's really digging for. I mean, other than the double, now, he, he's got to get the double. Now you need the double, and Alex has every resource under the sun, and you're still stuck with an egg on bench. Alex is in a good spot here. If, yeah. If this just comes down to Jack taking a knockout on that uh, Zorark, a baby Zorark in the active. Um, then I don't think that there is anything else Jack could do because he needed that GXEX knockout this turn. If he didn't get it, then Alex can just pull the last prize and end what's been a really close series. And he's just sitting there. He's He seems pretty relaxed to me. Yeah, I think Alex, uh, Jack is frantically looking for a way out. Alex just, I think, just waiting for uh, Jack to announce an attack. Super Rod going to try and get some Pokemon out of the discard. So maybe taking away that Oracorio option on the egg, the squishy right. egg on bench. that Super squishy. That, uh, that closed the door on Jack in game one. Those are going to be shuffled in. And, you know, another – some people might be watching this and thinking, why doesn't Alex just show the win condition? Well, this is such a close game, anything could happen. And keep in mind that Alex doesn't even – or presumably doesn't know Jack's 60 cards. So if Jack had a red card, for example, and Alex just, like, happened to spill the beans that he had game in hand, if he does, then Jack could just say, oh, okay, I'll go ahead and red card you. Shuffle that back in. Yep, uh, Alex Shemansky's hand is massive, mm -hmm. uh, almost almost there. matching the amount of time or the amount of cards that has in the discard. Like, oh, the and, and I think he's got the knockout. Yeah, and he's got the Guzma. Yep. He's gonna, I'm going to choose the egg. I know I've got enough for that. Alex Shemansky, 2-0 in round nine. Yeah. Going to be playing in day two tomorrow. Jack Carter started off hot. I believe it was 5-0 and 1 at one point. Uh, things went a little sideways in the final uh, final rounds of day one. And uh, falls himself, finds himself just shy of a day two berth. That's right, but still a really good showing. Finish strong, win and ends mat matches. Even if you lose them, still an opportunity to just show your skills. And we saw that here today where there was a really close mirror match. And you had a little bit of that pairing, a little bit of that, a little of that dodging. But ultimately, we just had Alex come on top. And I think the MVP in that mirror matchup was that breakthrough Zorark. It gave him the ability to put the pressure on and keep the pressure on, whereas with the foul play Zorark, it kind of dwindled in that second game. It was originally Jax to lose, but after that initial explosion, it just became less relevant. Yeah, when you put it on your opponent to control your damage output, again, through foul play, having to copy an attack, uh, you saw Alex immediately pivot and do Supernatural Dance, uh, yeah. take a knockout in the back in backgrounds, like, I don't know, whatever, like, what are you going to do to what I've got going on? Uh, and the answer was <laughs> nothing. Jack had to put a piddly 60 damage onto um, onto the active Pokemon, onto that uh, active or Corio, not even good enough for a knockout. And here we are, Alex finds himself 2-0 in round nine and going to be playing tomorrow on Sunday, St. Paddy's Day. Fantastic. And, well, with that, it looks like we will be segueing into a winner interview very shortly, so stay tuned.